What's going on everybody? It's Boo from Mile High Distilling. Thank you for tuning in to this week's video. We have a very simple recipe we're going to be doing this week. We're going to be making a rum. And why rum is so simple is it's two ingredients. Three, if you count water, it's going to be water, molasses, and yeast. So we've got a pretty easy recipe ahead of ourselves. Obviously, we can take that rum once it's fermented, and when we distill it, we can turn it into white rum, gold rum, spiced rum, uh, orange creole rum. We could do a ton of stuff with that, but the base of every rum is going to be those three ingredients. Some people substitute molasses for brown sugar. You can also do that. I would recommend going the traditional route. So I'm gonna give you my rundown of the recipe. I've done rum once before a few years back, and I ended up using too much molasses. It didn't really affect anything. It still fermented fine and came out fine, uh, but it took a lot longer to work off. So we're gonna dial back from what I originally did a few years ago. We're gonna be using about 96 ounces worth of molasses. Uh, that's gonna translate to about three quarters of a gallon. Um, and it's gonna weigh about eight and a half pounds. So whatever figure you want, that's what we're gonna be using. Then we're gonna top off with water pitch our yeast, we're done. So very, very simple, basically a sugar wash, but it makes a nice clean rum. And then from there, you can really choose what you do with that rum, get some flavor with an oak spiral, you know, start adding spices, whatever you really want. So without further ado, let's begin. So I start my rum by adding two gallons worth of boiling water, hot water first. Reason I do that is that molasses that viscosity of it, it's so thick, um, not super essential. It's not like you'll be unable to stir if it's just molasses. But when you add this water in first, that mixture just goes in smoother, allows it to sort of just get around that bucket, make everything a little bit easier, in, in, in my opinion. So I'm gonna add hot water first. And then in goes our molasses, 96 ounces worth. And now that our molasses has gone in, we're just gonna to top the rest off with cold water and we're, we're done from there until we can cool down enough to pitch our yeast. So that molasses added about half a gallon to my bucket. So we're trying to top this to about six and a half gallons. Four gallons of cold water should do me. Obviously we want cold at this point. Some people consider that a little bit cheating. I'm just gonna bring that temperature down a little bit with that cold water. We're gonna to have to uh, get it down for our yeast. So in goes bucket number one. And here goes bucket number two. Minus that spill, I think I did okay. We're at 24 liters. That's just under six and a half gallons, which would be 25 liters. So we'll call it there. We're gonna go ahead and take a temperature reading. We're gonna take a, we're gonna get our starting gravity reading for our hydrometer. And from there, you'll be seeing 
a yeast pitch, and further info on rum and what we're doing. Let's go ahead and take that hydrometer reading. It looks like we're sitting about 6%. Um, that's just too low for me. So I think what we're going to do is add another half gallon worth of molasses. So that'll total one and a quarter gallon of molasses in the full recipe. We're going to see if that can bump us up to at least 10. I'd like to try to get 12 to 15. And it appears adding an additional 64 ounces, half a gallon worth of molasses, brought us up a whopping 1%. So what could be happening here? and this is all speculation on my part, is that a lot of what's in this molasses is locked in sugars. It's so condensed and so thick that I think because this hydrometer is meant to sort of measure the sugar content, I think this is basically a false reading. Um, that's my initial thought. Now, I think we have enough molasses by all means, to get 13 to 15%. And I think as we add our yeast and those that yeast starts to break down those sugars, I think we're going to start increasing in our alcohol content. Now, the question for me is, do I want to make that gamble on that speculation? Do I want to stop here, keep it natural, pure, only molasses, and just hope I get a little better yield instead of that low 7%? Or do I want to add sugar here to where I can know I can get my sugar content? I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to use this as a testing, a testing batch. Um, we're going to test something out with this. We're going to go ahead and leave it as is with that supposed 7%. I'm going to pitch my yeast and then I'm going to come back in a day and I'm going to see if that increases. Um, if not, we'll consider adding sugar, and if I end up doing that, I guess you'll see it later in the video. Looks like I'm sitting at about 75 degrees, which you can't really do much better with this specific brand of yeast I'm using. I'm using a rum specialty yeast by Still Spirits, designed to help with that flavor profile of the rum, as well as potentially it's going to break down that molasses a little bit better. I don't know that for a fact, but we're going to see, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and pitch here. And this specific strain of yeast by Still Spirits uh, does not require a nutrient. So it's just going to be the yeast packet going in. Remember, always sprinkle over top and then stir in as you're doing that. That's supposed to help with that oxygen flow. And then before I go ahead and close my bucket for fermentation, I make sure every last yeast particle on that top layer is gone. And ladies and gents, I will report back tomorrow, let you know how that conversion is going. Hey guys, back here on day two of our rum. And I think this test is going pretty well. So went ahead and a few hours ago, took another ABV reading. I went up a percent. It's not much, but I am going up. Now from there, I was thinking, ah, screw it, add some sugar, get up to 12 or something, call it good there. Obviously I don't always like adding sugar. It's sort of a, a pretty, um, well-known opinion in the moonshine community that sugar sort of makes things harsher and more of a bite. Um, I've definitely done full sugar washes where that wasn't the case, so I think it's really on how you run it. But regardless, if I can keep sugar out of my spirit, I want to. And that's not just because that's not because of the bite. It's just I try to keep things all natural. I'm not a big fan of, of sugary stuff to begin with. Anyways, um, was going to add some sugar. Went ahead and because I'm at work, I'm doing work stuff. I'm talking with customers. I'm answering some emails, going back and forth here and there. And um, 
sure enough, two hours later, I finally had time to come see this again. And I'm like, you know what? I want to take another ABV reading. I'm seeing it percolating a lot, bubbling. And I want to see what's going on. I'm seeing some activity. I gained another half a percentage just in those two or so hours I was gone. So I think we're going to keep things original as I planned without any added sugar. And I think our weekend will be the real deciding factor. Uh, this is Friday here when I'm filming this. We're going to go ahead and let it go throughout the weekend. And then I'm going to come back and, um, and see what I'm at. And if I, if I don't like that ABV, I'll probably add some sugar. Um, I'm really hoping for some good results. And I hope this is a learning experience for both of us. You know, I, I, I hope you guys learn from our channel. And keep in mind, I'm not by any means an expert distiller. I have all the knowledge in my head. I talk about it daily with people, but actually doing it is a whole other thing. And I'm learning along as I'm doing this video, really. It's been two years since I've done a rum. So I want to experiment. That's the fun of distilling for me. I want to test and do things my way and see what works. So um, I will be back after the weekend with another update and hopefully everything goes well. Hello, hello for one final time. We are past our weekend and uh, I have failed. I have failed my test. So 8.5% on Friday. What I really should have done was check things Saturday. Just stop being lazy, come into work, check things out. Um, I'm sitting here over my weekend. I'm at 5%. So things are starting to convert. And that's how hydrometers work. You start with the highest sugar content possible. And then as the sugar starts to work off, it decreases your ABV. That's how you get your final gravity reading. Uh, that's how you know everything's worked off. But I don't have the information that I need to know if in Saturday, if it got higher than 8.5% or that's really where it stopped and it's just been working off since I achieved that 8.5%. Um, without that information, I'm pretty fully lost. Um, but going off my smells, I think I'm able to determine that there's, there's not an awful lot of alcohol content in this fermentation. And so I'm going to go ahead and add four pounds of sugar. So I know this recipe video has been a little off the wall since we started and didn't really have the choice to redo it without ending up with three different rum fermentations. So just as a rehash, we, this recipe will consist of one and a quarter gallons of molasses and four pound sugar. You could definitely use more sugar for a higher alcohol content. I want to keep it at four and just try to keep it as less sugary as I can. But let's go ahead and dump this in. And I think our yeast still has enough time to work off. So with our sugar added, we're going to go ahead and take another ABV reading. And if things aren't right, we'll just keep it, chalk this up as a learning experience. And after adding that sugar, there's a lot more of a sweetie, sweet note to this rum. Um, it's back at its original 8% or so in the hydrometer reading. Given that I've already converted, I know at least 3.5% um, from the weekend. I can pretty much assume that this is at least 12 or so percent. Um, so we'll keep it like this. I'll just be checking this, making sure everything's running smooth. And um, please look forward to a future video when we distill this. And that's when things will actually matter. This video is kind of a mess. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, I think the distillation will go smoothly. And I think we'll make a really nice quality rum. Hope you guys at least enjoyed it regardless. And thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. And please leave any comments, um, any notes you guys might have on your rum, what you like to do, notes for me, everything. Thank you, guys.